Welcome back to another episode of Let's Go Streaking. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I think maybe two weeks or so, my computer broke. It's a long story, but finally got a new computer. I'm here. Hopefully, I can do this a bit more often. And thank goodness I'm able to do one today because holy smokes. Yesterday, had a lot of smoke with Ramon Laureano and Alex Sintron. Like, Alex Sintron, who are you? Get out of here. You're not good. You're a bad hitting coach. Well, as soon as the Astros can't cheat, you, 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 don't, you, you don't know how to teach hitting anymore? Huh? But anyways, so Laureano gets hit for the second time. I believe it was the third time in the series. And it's not like uh, Castellanos was on the mound. I don't know his first name. He's a rookie. Hasn't pitched much above a ball. And he, he just a, a slider gets away from him. <laughs> then Loriano just baller move, just is telling him, "Oh, you got you got to snap it, you got to snap it." And he's like, "Oh, he, sliders aren't supposed to go straight. You got to you got to snap the slider." It, it, that that's it's one of the best reactions to getting hit by a pitch I've seen. Um, and the, you know, I think it little little bit of tension uh, going on with him barking at Castellanos but you know I think it it's getting settled and I I was obviously making highlights for the game and uh they were out there just showing the replay of the hit by pitch I believe <laughs> and then all of a sudden you hear a lot of commotion and they they quickly get out of the replay and Loriano's just charging towards the Astros dugout like how did this even happen and then we find out that the man that caused the ruckus is a man by the name of Alex Sintron. Who, who are you? So apparently he's the hitting coach. Um, and I did a little bit of digging. Wanted to get a bit, uh, bit of an understanding of who Alex Sintron is. And trust me, he's a terrible baseball player. He was not good. He was very bad. Um, so here, here's a fun. Here's your fun stat of the day. So Alex Intron in his career. We're on Baseball Reference right now. If you want, if you want to follow along, of course. Negative two point two WAR. I <laughs> mean, that's tough. That's really tough. I, I don't like to see that. I, I hate to see that. It just it really makes me sad to see. Then let's let's flip over to Ramon Laureano's baseball reference page. Pull it up here. Hmm, so he's worth seven wins in his career. Good for good for Ramon. But the best stat, the best stat of the day in 2020, in 54 at bats, Ramon Laureano is worth 1.1 wins. Let's go back to Sintron's. Oh, so you're telling me in 2000, 56 ABs, Alex Sintron was worth negative. 2.2 wins. And Ramon Laureano in 54 ABs is worth 1.1. <laughs> Sintron, what are you doing? What, what, were you even on the field? Did you even bring up a bat to go hit? Like, what are you doing? And so... Looking just looking into some of Sintron's years, there's there's one there was one decent year, 2003, where he had a 112 OPS plus, 12 percent above league average, good good on you, 359 on base percentage, good on you, and then 2004. Just, One of the worst offensive seasons I can think of off the top of my head 
for a full-time position player. 154 games, 613 plate appearances, 262 average, who cares about average, 301 on base percentage, almost in that sub-300 club, almost in that LCD's Escobar leadoff territory in 2015. 665 OPS, 68 OPS plus. By by, uh, my quick maths, 32% below league average. (laughs) I don't like to see that. (laughs) And uh, you'd expect a team that starts Alex Sinchon at shortstop. And he plays in 154 games wouldn't be very good. And you'd be absolutely correct. The 2004 Arizona Diamondbacks, 51 and 111. (sighs) The Orioles last year won 54 games. The 2004 Arizona Diamondbacks, 51 wins. Oh, scouting director Mike Rizzo. (laughs) That's funny now the GM of the Washington Nationals. But yeah, I don't, I hate, I hate to see um, when you think, like when you know like a a great person, a great uh, person in the game of baseball and you look up their stats and they're not very good. I I, I hate to see that. And when Alex Intron, I looked at, I looked it up and terrible career. I, a part of me like was really hurt. Anyways, so that's, that's one way to look at it. And then another um, just him barking at Loriano, looking all tough, and then he just hides behind his players. That's just a perfect um, metaphor of what they did during the scandal and during the investigation. You know, when Bregman had that interview, when he was like, "Oh, the commissioner made made his report. The commissioner made his report. The commissioner made his report." Hiding behind Dr. Manfred, hiding behind Mr. Mr. Manfred, Robbie Manfred, Robbie Two Bags. No, he, Mr. Manfred has never hit a double in his life. Um, but yeah, so it was just a perfect, perfect illustration of what went on in the off season. So Loriano's obviously going to get suspended. Um, Austin Allen might get suspended. Uh, the A's catcher, he kind of ran into the into the scuffle. Um, but I hope Alex Sintron gets a hefty suspension. He probably should have been suspended anyways for the Astros cheating scandal if you kind of look into the details a bit more. But I don't know, hopefully justice is served. And hopefully Joe Kelly doesn't get suspended anymore um, because of this situation. That would be rather unfortunate. Um, but anyways, that's I kind of just wanted to hop on talk a bit about that um there's some good baseball yesterday Acuna hit three home runs on the day in the doubleheader um the Nelson Lamette sneaky Cy Young contender I think I I tweeted that out before the season started I'm not trying to pat my back uh my back yet but pat pat myself on the back yet focus pat myself on the back there we go head boy I'll, I'll give me one pat um He's looking really good. He had the he had a no hitter until Cole Calhoun took him yard, but he, he that Padres team is super exciting. Uh, they have a they have a big series against a four game set against the Dodgers starting tonight, which that I think um, if we're going early, early kind of matchups of the year, I think Padres Dodgers is up there. They had a really good three game set, um, maybe a week ago. Um, with that, especially that third game where the Padres made a run in the ninth. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to see this four game set, see how many home runs Fernando Tatis Jr. can hit. Like yesterday, I was um, doing the A's Astros game and I kind of had my laptop off to the side and I saw it was the bottom of the first and Padres had a one nothing lead and I thought, oh, I t- Tatis did it again. But he didn't. Machado did actually. Machado hit two yesterday, I think, starting to heat up. Um, so, yeah, just good good baseball action all around. 
Oh, I forgot to mention Madison Bumgarner. Not looking great so far. Um, no, I'm not, not going to overreact. I mean, he, he has a lot of mileage on that arm. Like, I was kind of, I was thinking, you know, I mean, Felix Hernandez kind of started to fall off, what, when he was 31? And I was thinking how many how many innings he had, and I was looking it up last night. He had 2,415 innings <laughs> before his 31st birthday. Now, Madison Bumgarner isn't that substantial, um, but they, they kind of had similar career paths. Both came into the league when they were 19. Madison Bumgarner has 1,863 innings plus another 100 in the postseason. And he's 30 right now. Oh, no, he actually just turned 31. Nine days ago. August 1st. Happy birthday, Maddie. Happy birthday, Mason Saunders. Um, so, yeah, he's a lot of innings on the arm. So, it'll be interesting to see if he can get back on track. I, I think he'll be able to. I mean, he, he's kind of a guy that gets into rhythm throughout the season, I feel. That's kind of why he's pitching. He pitches so well in October. He's just in the heat of the season. He's super competitive. So I think I think he'll be fine. I, I don't think Chase Field suits him the greatest, considering um, – the fact that it's not a great pitcher's ballpark like San Fran was, but I I think I don't think he's going to be whatever he was in San Fran early on, but I don't think anybody was really expecting that anyways. It's hilarious that he's 31. It feels like he's been around forever. Like think of Jacob deGrom. You think he's still in his prime. You, you still got maybe three years left of him just being absolutely dominant. He's 32 already. <laughs> I, you, you think of different different players that you don't think, like Rick Porcello, I think, is 31 as well. He seems like he's been around for ages. Like, if you put a gun to my head maybe a week ago, who's younger, Rick Porcello or, or Jacob deGrom. Like, I knew Jacob deGrom came into the league late. He came in when he was 25. But I probably would have said deGrom's younger than Porcello. Um, anyways, got off a bit off track there. Jerks and Profar's only, tw only 27. Like, jerk Jerks and Profar is at least 33. I, uh, we've known about Jerks and Profar for so long, dating back to the Little, Little League World Series. It's hilarious. He's like, <laughs> I was thinking of uh, in the off season doing this bit, but just the best prospects that aren't actually prospects still, like Jerks and Profar is number one on that list. Every single year, I'm gonna pick him as a breakout star. It hasn't happened yet, but it's it's coming. He's gonna break out when he's 32. He's going to have a long 20-year career. He's going to retire when he's 52. Um, another guy, if you're a Jays fan, Anthony Alford. Anthony Alford could be 39 on a minor league deal. I think he's going to win the MVP. Um, anyways, got very off track there. Um, but, yeah, like I said, going to be doing Padres Dodgers tonight. Uh, Dustin May starts last time. Uh, his last start was against the Padres as well, so we'll see if the Padres can make any adjustments or if he's going to just keep throwing that two-seamer like 18 inches of horizontal break. Um, that pitch was disgusting. You, you guys you guys all probably know what I'm talking about. And then I'll probably also do Braves Phillies, Newcomb and Nola. So those, those will be the two games I'm doing today. And the first episode two weeks ago, I said Bo Bichette was going to get a hit, and he did. Um, I know that was a long time ago, but the streak is still alive because I haven't done one of these in a while. So for to get to get the streak to two, I think. Hmm. 
maybe maybe the rule is the the games that I'm doing I have to pick a hitter from. So I'll I'll go with the Braves and Phillies game, and I'll go with Ronald Acuna Jr. Now Aaron Nola is a tough matchup, but that Phillies bullpen is atrocious. So I think I think Acuna Jr. is going to get a little little knock knock off uh, the Phillies bullpen. So that's it. Blue Jays are off today, so don't have to be let down by them again today, which is good. And yeah, I will. I think we uh, are probably going to record an episode of the Red Shirt Culture podcast tomorrow morning. So we'll do a bit of MLB, I think. Um, we'll see if Tanner has a Hobie Milner update. I don't think so. I still don't think he knows who Hobie Milner is, but. Uh, we'll do some basketball, college football, most likely going to get canceled, it looks like. So maybe we'll touch on that as we are a voice of, of the people, a voice of the student athletes. Student athletes is, when you call yourself a student athlete, you kind of kind of look like a, I don't know, not like you, you think you're better than everyone. I don't like, I don't like calling myself a student athlete. Anyways. I think that wraps it up. So enjoy your days. Enjoy your baseball. And assuming we record tomorrow, see you tomorrow.